Hey everybody, it's Evan and Irma here with Avira Health, and we are thrilled today to have a really fascinating talk on hand, making AI work for medtech. A huge topic, a big challenge in managing data security, cleansing compliance, while connecting more devices. Yes, more devices, only 5% of uh, devices are connected today globally, believe it or not. So we're going to explore pillars of connectivity, you know, insights around med tech and decision support, plus the importance of having the right talent on hand to make AI solutions work. Um, as always, let's start off with some introductions. Uh, first, Pravin, uh, good to see you again. Maybe some introductions for the audience on your role. And of course, who is FPT? Thank you, uh... Ivan, for having me, uh, I'm Praveen. I'm the Executive Vice President Business Head. I'm responsible for uh, new sales for North America, Africa. I'm also responsible for setting up a healthcare practice for North America. And I also am on the board of uh, uh, India Operation. Uh, uh, we are part of the FPT Corp. Uh, FPT Corporation is the largest corp from Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam, which is a land of endless possibilities and uh, now ranked seventh uh, to be most attractive destination for offshoring. Uh, so FPT Corporation started in 1988. Uh, it's a $2.7 billion group with 73,000 employees across all the affiliates. And FPT uh, diversified into multiple businesses, uh, FPT software, uh, telecom, retail, pharmacy, uh, smart cloud, uh, semiconductor, uh, digital, education, and many more. Uh, FPD Software, which is the $1 billion company, uh, employs around 35,000 people, and uh, we are globally present in 30 countries. Uh, FPD Software uh, provides end-to-end -end services. I call it uh, sketch to scale or you know, concept to uh, delivery. Uh, so under the portfolio, we provide services uh, with consulting, application services, uh, product engineering, digital aid services, uh, which includes your cloudification, AI analytics, AR, VR. Artificial intelligence, which is the topic of today, is the biggest uh, area of uh, services within FPT. Uh, we, have, we have close to 3,000 people. We work with different scientists and research labs across the globe. Uh, in North America, we have set up a, a lab in Quebec. Uh, we work very closely with Mila University. We also work with uh, Landing AI in Bay Area. Uh, we are also uh, working with Arkansas University, University of San Diego, University of Liverpool, Warwick. Uh, we have our own center in, in Cunha, uh, where we are churning 1,300 uh, AI engineers and experts every six months. As of now, we have done close to $175 million worth of AI projects where we applied AI wow. into various customer workflows. And one of the credible in the healthcare space is in the uh, rapid uh, micro, microbial uh, susceptible test, which is basically we reduce the uh, AST from 16 hours to four hours. It is the first FDA approved AI solution for customers. Oh, fascinating. Wow. Uh, now if we can uh, have Patricia Black, Director of Healthcare Solutions at Cardinal Peak and FPT Software Company. Pat, if you can talk a little bit about the Cardinal Peak uh, history, what you guys do, and and now being part of the family, um, tell us how you've integrated. So um, just a little bit about myself. My name is Pat Black. I have over 20 years in experience in medical product development leadership. Um, along the way, I've uh, worked with teams that have developed products and launched them globally. I've been responsible for a couple of startups, and I launched a center of excellence for cross-global product development with a Fortune 500 company. Wow. And as you notice now, I'm uh, currently the director of healthcare solutions for Cardinal Peak, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of FPT Software. And every day... I get to talk to people, a wide variety of people doing medical device development. And so that's very exciting for me. We get to help them on their way. So um, about oh, Cardinal Peak, we were founded in 2002 and we have about hundred employees and the focus initially was on audio and video. So today we've expanded the focus and we also do healthcare med tech solutions, IoT, 
mobile UI UX, that sort of thing. So um, we're now uh, we were we were acquired by FPT Software almost a year ago, October 2023. And so that's really um, allowed us to expand our capabilities. But still, because we are a wholly owned subsidiary, we still have that face-to-face -face connection with our customers that we've had for so long that we value. So um, from a product development perspective, we do kind of a soup to nuts for a medical device, right? We do hardware development, so uh, printed circuit board design, RF, if there's RF capabilities in your device, as well as embedded software, C, C++, Linux, whatever um, mm -hmm. language that you use. And then we also go into the cloud uh, and connect the device to the cloud and to a mobile app. So we have this you know, system integration all the way from the product itself through to the cloud and to mobile apps. We have um, system architects that help people get get that all that figured out, and we also have uh, system integrators and, and QA tests. We have a broad set of industry partners, and um, one of them that we work closely with is Amazon Web Services. We are a tiered, uh, advanced tier service provider, and that means that. If AWS has a customer that comes to them and they say, I want to connect and I want to do these things with AWS as a partner, we can go in and work with AWS to learn more about what the requirements are and then help their customers be successful as well. So we have a broad set of capabilities. Wow, certainly impressive for sure. And last, but uh, definitely not least, uh, Gopal, a fellow Bostonian, if you could introduce yourself, a little bit about your background and role within FPT. Thank you, and a pleasure to be on the panel and, and with the team today. Uh, yeah, new Bostonian, I just arrived, so in, enjoying uh, <laughs> the, the Northeast, so thank you. Um, I, you know, my background is clinical, uh, but I'm a clinician innovator, so I began uh, as a physician, neurosurgeon out of Australia, and uh, had the opportunity to really integrate and, and work with novel solutions in medical devices from a very early stage of training. So I've seen a lot of uh, various technologies in minimally invasive surgery, surgery, intravascular surgery, robotic surgery, and it goes on. Um, but we've seen a transformation in the device world uh, over the last several decades. And as a clinician, I came to the United States after having done um, uh, my NIH research in, in University of Toronto, uh, joined uh, the faculty at Duke, uh, where I got my MBA, and started to learn and then teach the, uh, the intricacies of innovation commercialization, uh, and have had roles in business development, Boston Scientific, advisor to the likes of Intuitive Surgical, and Medtronic, and other large med tech, as they navigate the, the world of um, outcomes. At the end of the day, we're all here for the patient's benefit. And as a clinician, I bring the insights into what uh, could work, how it should work safely, uh, and um, guiding engineers and, and commercial entities to successful market. I've started several companies across the medical device space, currently working one with ECMO right now, but now also in the new world of AI which is really exciting, is these devices have always been collecting data, but now we have a way of aggregating, understanding, and utilizing that data, again, for the patient's benefit. And mm -hmm. my role with FPT is really, as a health tech advisor, it's to understand the customer voice. And that's the customer that is a medical device company, but through the eyes of the patient and the clinician. You know, what, what are their needs to service uh, the patient efficiently and small, with more precision. And now is a really exciting time. And we're at the juncture of significant change in the practice of healthcare because we're unleashing um, the ability to use data that we've, we've seen, we've collected, but we can now interpret in whole new ways. Wow, really fascinating personal and professional backgrounds, all three of you bringing so much synergy, clearly. Um, uh, 
the FPT portfolio is all better together, bringing all these different perspectives and expertise. So maybe Pat and then Pravin, can you tell us more about FPT's acquisition of Cardinal Peak and how these specific synergies have helped uh, the two companies now deliver better uh, products and services in health tech and better serve the med tech clients? Yes, so uh, Cardinal Peak uh, primarily staffed with senior engineers, architects. And so we deliver a really high value, high need for customers, right? So they say a customer comes to us, they have a device, some kind of an instrument or something that needs to be connected to the cloud. We can help them with that. And as well as, you know, architect that and architect, like, how does this dashboard work for your connectivity to the cloud? You know, what are the data components that are interesting for you? And we can architect that out. Uh, what FPT software has done for Cardinal Peak is really expanded our capabilities, right? So we were focused in certain areas and we could certainly do these medical devices and all of that. But now we can look at what are the best shore opportunities to engage to do the product development. So we can go in and architect the front end and get these things, um, you know, together and get the requirements up there. And then we can bring in a lower cost services to help execute this in a budget friendly manner. Right. So that yeah. has been huge for us because uh, now we have the also the ability to support like managed services, help desks and things like that and sustaining. And, you know, in the past, this was just kind of beyond our capabilities. So we're pretty excited about it. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. And I, I, I'm seconding what uh, uh, Pat said. We the, the statement that I made was sketch to scale. So we were missing sketch part. And that mm. sketch part was added by Cardinal Peak. So <clears throat> now we can go right from, you know, concept designing, development, delivery, right from software, because in the in the software space, <clears throat> especially in the healthcare, we have done a lot of projects. And whether it is, uh, you know, building the middleware for hematology or, you know, backend application for your analysis. Uh, recently, we were doing a product for one of the very large uh, health tech company where uh, we finished our software and then they were struggling to finish the hardware part because uh, <clears throat> they were still not able to complete the hardware piece and and the current vendor work was not able to deliver on time and and we were missing that piece in the past which now with the cardinal peak is is adding a strength to us so so that that becomes a full story now so we can provide all nine yards to our customer end to end we call it sketch to scale Fantastic. So, so important. It's all about accelerating development, getting technology in patients and providers' hands as quickly as possible, something we, we would all appreciate. So, Praveen, first, I mean, talk about the FPT portfolio in terms of accelerating development and maybe a couple anecdotes or examples on how you're helping clients accelerate their development. Yeah, so uh, FPT has been in, in the health tech industry for over 15 years. Uh, we have close to like 5,000 people working purely in the health healthcare space. And our primary uh, engagement has been in the product development. That's where we started. And of course, we scaled in multiple areas. So healthcare space, if you look at, <clears throat> we have our own EMR, EHR, and we provide end-to-end -end service in, in the Southeast Asia. <clears throat> but outside uh, Vietnam, We've been engaged by uh, companies for doing the software development for devices like X-ray machine, uh, CT scanner, ultrasound. So we have built embedded softwares for these big machines. Uh, besides that, we have also done app development on top of these machines, whether it is a backend application or front-end applications that has been used by the clinicians or the uh, laboratory uh, uh, personals. So that we did. Uh, we have been engaged in building the platform where we have connected We've been part of a team uh, building the platform, connecting the uh, uh, glucometer, uh, blood glucometer, uh, insulin pen, or asthma pumps. Uh, we built the middleware, as I said in the past, uh, uh, for the hematology, which is the largest uh, uh, hematology company. They have 80% of the market share. Their entire middleware for the hematology machine was built by us. We also built their application for urine analysis. Uh, as I was giving an example of uh, 
health tech company. They are launching their product in 2025. We are building their entire application into and <clears throat> on top of that. Uh, moving to the AI, which is the topic of today's discussion, uh, we have applied AI into many uh, workflows. One example I gave, which was the first FDA-approved AI application, but uh, we have applied AI for lung cancer detection on the CT scan. Uh, so mm. you know, uh, it, it helps uh, quickly uh, detect that. Uh, second, we applied AI on uh, tumor detection on the ultrasound machines. We built an AI solution for uh, syphilomatric analysis for uh, orthodontist. Uh, then we also built the AI application for acne uh, detection. Uh, we have recently applied AI for uh, healthcare hospital when the doctor uh, interacts with the patient. Uh, you know, post uh, the clinic visit, they have to create a report. Now AI can actually capture all those conversation live when they are talking to the patient and summarize it for the doctors to review it and upload it to EMR. So reducing the time efficiency and you know productivity of the uh, clinician. We are working with one of the customer where we are building the conversational AI for the nursing solution. So this is basically wow. going to help uh, nurses or basically follow up with the patient post uh, clinical visit or pre clinical visit. And this is a conversational AI. It, it talks to you like a human uh, person, understands the terminology in the healthcare. So, a lot of those kind of things are building. One of the uh, uh, important things that we have done, we are bringing into this whole fold is the AI tool that can help develop the application in half the time and 40% better price point. Huh. And this tool can actually done do 40% of the code development. So not just uh, helping quickly do the uh, product development, but uh, much faster and uh, and a better price. Wow, wow. That, that's impressive. impressive. And Pat, you mentioned uh, data and the importance of getting data from devices to the cloud and vice versa. And of course, uh, AWS cloud and, and other clouds are fundamental to to accelerating development. Maybe talk about your work in that area and how it can help uh, uh, developers as well. Yes, yeah, so um, you know you have to get the data off the device for people like Gopal, right? That, that can do the analysis and need to understand what's going on. So Cardinal Peak has developed an IoT solution that accelerates uh, time to market, right? So basically, we work with um, Amazon Web Services. They have um, connections with this company called Expressive. So say you have a medical device, and as you mentioned earlier in the opening, so few of those are connected, right? Globally, like less mm. than 5%. So what we can do is open the box and add in this Expressive chip. Expressive will connect to AWS directly. And you can use Wi-Fi if that's what's available to you. You can use local area network, you know, Bluetooth, whatever works for your particular device. Mm. And you can connect to Amazon Web Services. And then we use a product called Rainmaker, which takes and implements, has implemented a lot of the important factors that exist in an AWS environment. And you use your own AWS account. You don't need a server or anything. So this is really 80% of the work to get connected. You know, if you use a product that some folks have like a, a platform, an integration platform, they're very large, cumbersome, expensive. You're locked into a specific solution and your software updates really are what best serve the, their community, right? And then there's another way to do it, which is from scratch. You can just build this thing, you know, get all the software, the hardware, figure it all out for yourself. But, you know, we kind of liken that to building your own operating system. For us, we're like, why would you do that, right? So you can get this 80% solution from Amazon, and then we do the customization. So basically, uh, what data is interesting to you? Where do you want to collect it and how? Do you have a dashboard? How do you pull all these things together and these components together? So you get a solution that is not only quicker to market, but it's customized more to what your needs are. So um, that's a very exciting offering for us. A lot of folks seem to be very interested in it because 
as we said, there's not a lot of connected medical devices. So. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Um, Now, Praveen had already uh, brought us into the future a bit, talking about FPT solutions for lung cancer detection and advanced um, solutions for like diabetes management, etc. So I want to go even further into the future, future of health tech and med tech and ask Gopal to comment on um, your perspective on the future of data to make AI and connectivity work in healthcare. Obviously, data is a foundation for all advanced tech. So bring us into the near future with your current plans and your vision. Yeah, again, I, you know, isn't it exciting? Um, there, there is so much it's opportunity, really but uh, we have to really understand what needs to be paved um, so that we can actually build upon that. Uh, and then from building upon that, you know, what solutions are we really gearing towards or expecting? And what are our expectations? Uh, but I think, you know, when we look at um, data, uh, we went through a long story of digitization and we talk about digital transformation. Uh, the first layer of that was to actually get data um, actually digital from paper into electronic format. And we're still, you know, going through that process. And secondly, you know, the next layer upon that is, you know, where is the data coming from? Can all of these de- devices or technologies somehow network and communicate so that the data can be aggregated? Uh, we still suffer from the issues of silos, the issues of connectivity, various layers, languages, formats, protocols. Uh, and, you know, all of those things uh, have been discussed and, and very good standards of communication being worked out. Regulatory bodies have rolled their sleeves up, being very positive and forward thinking in, in laying the groundwork for the future, uh, which, again, is truly exciting. And I think where we've seen the greatest transformation uh, in the use of AI has really been in diagnostics because we passed the natural language or language digital barrier because the images themselves are pixels or, or pictures. And so pattern recognition is really what AI's initial strength was. And we saw rapid adoption of, um, of artificial intelligence in the use of improving diagnostics and now beyond that, uh, beyond the diagnostic capability, the, the ability for them to be autonomous. And so devices have already laid the groundwork and really is uh, a, a providing the future for what AI's potential can be. Following that, I think, is the desire of the clinician and patient engagement. A clinician would like data presented in a way that it's a decision assist. Uh, So predictive analytics, the ability to use an individual's data in context of population data, in context of pathological or disease-specific data, for the reason is that we'd like to be precise about our care to you, the individual. Decision assist also creates efficiency. It creates safety. Uh, Things that could, could or potentially would have been missed are now being flagged and being presented. So we're taking this, what we used, to, we used to call drinking from a fire hose of data. Uh, it's now a tidal wave growing into you know, mm-hmm. a greater and enormous and unpalatable amount of data. But with appropriate AI, we're synthesizing that into very specific instructions, very specific recommendations, and that is assisting all of the care providers. And its greatest impact right now is in workflow. We're seeing artificial intelligence flag where things can be um, create inefficiency because we've missed it or create um, recurring admissions or adverse events uh, because we're not tracking it. And I think AI is already making an impact. But then we go in the next step, and that is that the patient is wearing or has implanted a medical device and real-time monitoring where you're now taking the care paradigm to a new level of engagement where the patient becomes their own advocate, the physician and care teams are alerted and protocols are activated. Um, Wearables and implantable technologies are now looking at and designing ways that we can manage diabetes, cardiac failure, arrhythmia, um, heart failure, all all sorts of chronic diseases where it would take a patient Um, several visits over several months to get the appropriate medication. Now intervention can be real-time. That efficiency creates better outcome. So although we look at AI as an efficient tool, a way of manipulating data, at the end of the day, again, 
patient outcome, precise real-time management is where medical devices is going to lead the pack. So exciting. Wow, what an incredible uh, portrait vision you painted for us. And what a, what a great, great group of individuals. I wish we had, you know, more hours to discuss <laughs> this. And guess what we do? Uh, come see us at MedTech uh, Med Device Boston, September 25th, 26th. Uh, FTP, FPT will have a booth, uh, 914. They'll have a lunch and learn on the 25th. Great opportunity to dive deeper and really continue this discussion with these incredible individuals, including Gopal and Pat. And um, if you haven't done so, follow FPT America's Cardinal Peak on LinkedIn, where they put out some really educational, insightful content and white papers and all kinds of uh, interesting insights on med tech and health tech. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Much appreciated. And see you at Med Device Boston on the 25th. Yes, Thank so you so much. Nice. See you there. Thank, Thank you for everyone. having us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Thanks everyone, Bye. for listening.